Hey guys, what's up? It's Samantha, and today I'm going to be memory keeping the second week in October, and boy oh boy did I read a ton this week, so stay tuned for that. I read eight books, and it was it was a time. If you didn't know, in October I read 31 books in 31 days for my 31st birthday, so I was just a reading machine <laughs> in October, but without further ado, I'm going to talk about the kit and the planner stuff and then I'm going to jump into all of the books that I read this week. So I used this older mini kit from Scribble Prints Co. called Hello Pumpkin and I did pull in some little things that were left over in another kit that were a very similar uh, that pale gray color that's in this kit. They were the exact same color so I pulled those in because I needed some more little things to use in this spread and I got creative with cutting up the weekly ombre checklists or to-do list kind of things to make some more things for this spread. I probably, since it's a mini kit, I probably should have done a white, like a more white space spread. But I, before I really thought about that, I put down bougie boxes just because sometimes when I'm doing this, bougie boxes make it easier, faster to put stuff down so I don't have to like futz with the strip of paper that I use as a spacer for the full boxes on the inserts. And I didn't really think about that before I like put this down that, you know, it was an older mini kit that didn't have as many things to put down to write. So um, I pulled in tons of beautiful silver foil. I have these gorgeous web headers from Rose Color Days that you'll see that I love adding into my spooky spreads. You guys know that they're like my all time favorite foiled thing. I have a ridiculous amount of them. I don't think she normally posts them anymore for purchase in fall, but she did a custom order for me this past year, which I deeply appreciate. And I bought like so many of them. So I have enough for a few years uh, because I really appreciated her printing those and doing that for me. So I absolutely love how the spread turned out. I feel like whenever there's a mostly like black and white, it's so easy to pull tons of my spooky Halloween stickers in. I just absolutely adore how the spread turned out. Not much happened this week. It was a pretty chill week and I read a ton. So I'm going to jump into the eight books that I read this week because otherwise I will be here for forever and I will be talking about book number five and the video will be over and then I will have to redo this again, which don't want to do. If you can't tell, that's happened to me once or ten times. <laughs> so I am going to talk about all of the novellas that I read in the Wayward Children series because I read the first book last week, which was Every Heart a Doorway, and then I read the other five this week. I did have an arc of the sixth book, which is now out, but at, I think it came out in January, but at the time it was an arc, and I am going to just talk about all of those kind of collectively since I have similar feelings about most of them. So the first one that I read was Down Among the Sticks and Bones, which is Jack and Jill's story. And this is their sort of before Every Heart a Doorway, their origin story, so to speak. And this was a lot of fun. I really love Jack and Jill. They have, they come from like a darker kind of it almost feels like a B horror film with Frankenstein and vampires and that kind of stuff. There's like magic, but it's like weird science magic. And I really, really like their world, even though it is kind of like gory and bloody and dark. And I'm not really a big horror movie fan. It's just, I love everything about it and how wonderfully weird Jack is. So I adored this. Five out of five stars. Then the next book is Beneath the Sugar Sky, which takes place mostly in a nonsense world. And I have discovered I don't like the nonsense worlds as much as the like sensical sense worlds, whatever the logic worlds. I like those better than nonsense. <laughs> I'm not a big nonsense fan, um, which if you've read the series, that makes sense. <laughs> and when they're talking about kind of the axes of the different worlds that the kids find. Um, if you didn't know, if you didn't watch my previous video or you've never heard of Wayward Children, I should probably have said that. It follows various, they're novellas that follow various people, usually children who have fallen into kind of Narnia-esque portal worlds and then they have found themselves back on Earth and they 
are, you know, changed and can no longer fit into normal society. They're desperately trying to find their doors again, that sort of thing. And so the worlds they go to have a huge variety, but the in Beneath the Sugar Sky, there is this kind of candy world that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And it was fine. I liked it. I think I gave it a four out of five stars. It might have been more like a 3.5 out of four stars out of all of them. It's the one that I remember the least. Um, it was fun. I didn't dislike it, but it just wasn't as wonderful to me as some of the other ones. Then the next novella I read was In an Absent Dream, which is Lundy's story. And Lundy is one of the teachers. I guess she's like the therapist at the school. And she, when when she was a child, she also went through a doorway. And hers is like the Goblin Market, if you've ever read that poem, which of course I probably should have looked up who wrote the Goblin Market um, before I've read it by Christina Rossetti. It's kind of based off of that, like, goblin market. And I, because you know where Lundy's story ends, if you've read the first book, and my heart was just absolutely breaking because I knew what was coming. That last 10% of the novella, I almost didn't want to finish it because it was just so sad. (laughs) And I love this one so much. This was an easy five out of five stars. I just adored this story so much. And then the next novella is Come Tumbling Down, which is Jack and Jill's story after um, Every Heart a Doorway. So if like Down Among the Sticks and Stones, Sticks and Bones is kind of like their prequel, this is what happens after Every Heart a Doorway. And I loved this. This was, again, five out of five stars. I adore Jack. Like, I just love her so much. (laughs) And then the last one is probably my least favorite out of all of the novellas, and it's Across the Green Grass Fields. And in this one, we follow a main character. I think her name's Reagan, and she is obsessed with horses. And it's kind of a book about, like, being a preteen and this fear of change and growing up and she actually has like a hormone disorder where um she is like not entering puberty on her own and so she's kind of stuck in childhood and her peers are all you know starting their periods and like going into puberty and all this stuff and she's not and she really doesn't want to leave childhood and there's like uh, it's just like a really thoughtful examination of that. And that was something I related to about like not like this kind of fear of growing up. And she's obsessed with horses. She's like one of the horse girls. And so the world she goes to is all like horses and centaurs and unicorns and Kelpies and all different horse-esque things in mythology. And it just, once she got to this other world, it was pretty pointless. There wasn't a plot. Um, She just like pranced around with horses for a while. And then in the last 15%, it was like, oh crap, like we need to have a plot. And then like a thing happened, like an adventure happened right at the very end. And it just felt jammed in and pointless. Like I didn't dislike this book. I gave it a three out of five stars. Like I liked it. It's not one that I would necessarily reread if I was revisiting this world, um, just not my favorite out of all of them, but I can definitely see, I think different people relate differently to each of the different books. And I can see some people absolutely loving this and other people, maybe not so much. I'm in the not so much camp. Um, again, still liked it. Not a bad book, just not my favorite compared to the others in the series. And then, Uh, So that's all of the Wayward Children books that I read. Then going into the other non-Wayward Children books, I read my advanced copy of The Devil and the Dark Water by Stuart Turton, who wrote The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which I actually haven't read yet. I downloaded the audiobook ages and ages ago and then realized it's a book that makes no sense if you can't look at a map and like flip back and forth to a map. So I need to get a physical copy of the book and read it. And this is another book that I would say 
you will do well with the map, like having the map with you. The Ark did not have the map in it. And I found out that the end pages in the finished copy of the book have a map of the boat and have different things labeled. This is definitely like it's a contained murder mystery story that happens on a Dutch sailing vessel in the 1600s. They are sailing from the East Indies and it so it's all these people on a boat together and there is like some mysterious stuff going on and there's kind of this is it supernatural or is this you know a crafty clever person tricking people into thinking it's supernatural and there are you kind of have like different players different points of view there is a guy who's kind of like a Sherlock Holmes figure who's been captured and he is being taken back to Europe to be put on trial for something I can't at this point I can't remember but like that's how he is on the boat and then there's um like a wealthy merchant and his wife and his mistress and all these different characters and this is obviously because it's a murder mystery I don't want to talk too much about it but it's very um it's like that it's like a closed room mystery there's there's a term for that where it's all like people can't like leave it, they're on a boat in the middle of the ocean and it's very dark and twisty and I would say reading this the first hundred pages is very boat heavy and I was like in terms of learning about sailing and boats and trading routes and I was like why am I reading basically like a manual about Dutch sailing vessels like what the heck is this and then after that, like, once we got into the mystery, I was like, okay, I'm really liking this. I thought, I was like, this is going to be a solid, like, a four out of five star kind of book. And then I got to, like, the last five pages and not even five pages, like, maybe three or four pages. And my mind was so blown by that very end of the book that this became a five out of five star for me. I loved, like, I did not see the twist coming at all and it was so cleverly executed and I loved it so much like it was just so different than anything else I've read in a while and I really appreciated what he did with the ending of this book so five out of five stars it was a solid and very different murder mystery type thing so I really enjoyed it then the next book I read was also an advanced copy, and this was The Burning God by R.F. Kuang, which is the third book in the Poppy War series, which is an adult grim dark fantasy that takes place in a kind of fantasy version, like a, Chin a Chinese-inspired fantasy world that um, kind of pulls in elements of the Sino-Japanese War and Mao Zedong's rise to power. And it's very dark, very, very, very dark. And the third book is so, so dark. I think I obviously can't talk a lot about what's going on in this book without spoiling the other books, but R.F. Kuang just has a way of creating these characters that you are rooting for and are repulsed by all at the same time and the ending is very fitting but it is like you want to scream at at everyone <laughs> and it's it's like awful but it was perfect and I can't have imagined a different way for her to have ended that series and it was just like I, it, it fit the tone of the book so well and I find it that there's not a lot of books fantasy series that have both strong beginnings and strong ends and I think she ended this series very strongly I can see people not necessarily liking the ending but I can't think of how she could have done it any differently and I think it fits the story especially for a story as dark as this so it was it was great. It was a great ride. I'm glad that I read these books. They were awesome. Um, and then the next book 
I guess the last book that I read this week was a YA nonfiction book that I had to read for a book talk I was giving since um, I did these every month, but the teacher had requested for me to book talk at least one nonfiction title. And with like the election coming up and all of that, I decided to book talk Lifting As We Climb, Black Women's Battle for the Ballot Box by Yvette Dion. And this was a really great informative book that kind of talks about um, both like women's suffrage in context of how that affected Black women and then also more modern like voting rights issues and going through like the civil rights movement and into modern times and thing like it's just a very comprehensive book and it talks about a lot of voting rights activists that maybe aren't covered in traditional textbooks um people who were really influential in the movement for black women to get the vote and I really enjoyed this. I learned a lot, even though it's targeted at a YA audience, I still learned quite a bit. And it was a really easy book to book talk to my teens. And especially because I live in, I I work in Akron and the uh, Sojourner Truth's um, Ain't I a Woman speech was given like very like close to where the kids I was book talking to go to school. So I was able to be like, hey, you know that building that you drive past? Like that was where the anti woman speech was. So I was able to like tie it into local history. And it was, you know, they were very interested in it. And a bunch of the kids checked it out and asked for more books that were similar to that, which is all I want as a librarian is to recommend books to kids that they want to read. So um, if you have a teenager, a tween, a teenager in your life, that like this would be a great book to hand to them. I thought it was very interesting. I flipped between the ebook and the audiobook and both were great. So yeah, that was everything that I read this week. And I it was like a very strong reading week. I feel like October overall was a very strong reading month. I don't know that I'd ever do this again. I think I said that in my last video too, but it was a good time. And I absolutely love how the spread turned out. I just love like all that silver foil. I love silver foil. It just pops like so beautifully. (laughs) Um, I don't know. It's just, I know everyone else is like a gold person. I, silver foil is my favorite and that's just, that's just how it is. I love everything about how this turned out and it's just, it's spooky. There's Halloween stickers. I love the black and white girls from Fox and Cactus. It's just, it's, it's a good time all around. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, the shops that I routinely use and all of the books I read will be listed in the description down below, along with links to my Goodreads and Instagram. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye, guys!